I just see blood, shooting, you know, war, all sorts. I picture myself, I literally like think back to the day that, you know, the night that it happened and like just me and my staff there sharing food, everybody happy, the protesters smiling, you know, chanting, singing, you know, shouting and SARS and SARS and then the next thing is a bloodbath. They're shooting guns. They're shooting guns. Can you guys hear the guns? October 21st, 2020. Bullets spray a nation. Rivers of blood flowing across Nigeria. <laughs> Many lives were lost. Officials have either denied any casualties or not acknowledged them at all. Social media shows a different picture. The brutality of war. This is the best view I can give. I don't know. Just shoot him. Yeah. Images of casualties spread across the internet. Civilians documenting their experiences. People as high profiled as Naomi Campbell are posting to prove to the world that it is real, but the Nigerian government denies it. So our leaders, please, I urge you to, to please not insult the intelligence of Nigerians and, and the families. Yes, there were soldiers there. <laughs> people are not really talking about the police also came the SARS people were talking about they also came so maybe 40 45 minutes after the soldiers left most of the videos spread online have not been verified by either time or location please I didn't, I never said 78 people died. I don't know that. One event, referred to as the Lekki Massacre, which was live streamed on Instagram on October 20th by several individuals, cannot be denied. The true death toll is unclear. Look at 
Look at over there. Look at Lagos is on fire. They blocked everywhere and they want us to pass so that they can shoot us there in that fire. A fire over there. Look at fire over there. When I was doing the live, seven people had died. When my phone died, we had now my when my battery died, we had counted about 15 people. I don't know if it was more than that. We had a lot of people that had stray bullet wounds, gunshot wounds, and all that. Two dead bodies. That's what we've seen from all the mobs. That's what we've seen going to hospitals, that's what we've seen, you know, as records. What has happened is there's been so many footages that we're seeing, that people have shown, but we've not seen bodies, we've not seen relatives, we've not seen anybody truly coming up to say, indeed, X, Y, Z, I'm a father, I'm a mother to someone, and I cannot find that person. Nobody has turned up. DJ Switch, Kenan, amazing DJ, you know, I kind of followed Big Brother last season, but a friend sent me the video she sent. She stopped it at a point of, there's this older guy that was in a colorful abada. And then the friend told me he's dead. But in the same video, you could see he was hung, but he stood up. Do you understand? Now, I'm not trying to disparage live camera. I'm not turning. suffering of families. Do not insult the grief. Do not insult the grief of Nigerians. Do not insult the intelligence of Nigerians. Do not insult the pain that families are facing. Initially, on the day of the massacre, everybody was distraught. I think the mood was pretty much the same across board, you know, whether you were at the protest, you know, whether you were an onlooker, you know, even our parents, everybody felt it. So everybody was quiet, you know, people weren't really saying anything. Confusion, you know. I think the next day, people were angry. Why were they angry? Because the government denied everything. You know, they went as far as saying that, you know, DJ Switch, who was physically there at the protest, who went on Instagram Live and literally showed us, you know, some of the dead bodies, bullets being taken out of people's bodies, and we physically all watched, I watched somebody die on Instagram Live, you know, and they denied all of this. Everybody, look at this. These are the bullets that were falling, that were falling by our side, that were, were dodgy bullets. They were like, oh, you know, it's not true. She had a green screen at the back. Who said she had a green screen? So um, there was a guy that came out, he, you know, he, he's in the political office. He came out and said that it was a lie and she had a green screen and she either pre-recorded. I mean, how, how can you have a green screen on Instagram Live? If you had a green screen and you were to pre-record, you know, I'm sure a lot of editing would, I mean, it just made no sense. But, you know, this is how far they're going to go to discredit what actually happened. I even got analysts, people that have analyzed the various uh, videos that we are cropped that what we call it that we are photo photo photoshop put together a lot of the images being posted of someone in a nigerian flag ended up being a movie Kenny, i'm not going to ignore the damage people are doing by posting pictures of from a movie of someone in in, in a nigerian flag and sending it to Quartz, New York Times. Talk about the guy with the flag with blood on it. Is that the yeah, movie? Yeah, but that's one Which other Which movie is that from? Huh? I have no idea, but it's been confirmed to be a fake image. People did die. It wasn't photoshopped. I must, I must be a tech genius to photoshop a live feed. So you're saying that it was military officers who ordered peaceful protesters that's, to be shot at Lekki Yeah, that's what Lekki the pictures, yes. They were there, that's what the footage, I mean, that's what it shows. We saw everything, we know that people died, you know, we know that hundreds of people were injured, you know, the hospitals were full, every single hospital had to take on people. Sometimes, some hospitals didn't even have enough beds to handle the amount of people that were coming with injuries from gunshots, you know, so how can you deny that this happened? You know, the records are there, just all you have to do is go and get them, you know, but I feel like they've just decided to, you know, completely deny and discredit the whole movement. Protesters alleged bodies were being taken by soldiers. A game of he said, she said. A game of death. In hindsight, just, I wish we, we hadn't done it, but 
we carried dead bodies and dropped at the feet of the soldiers so that they could see what they did to us. When I asked the um, unit commander or something, why are you killing us? I wish we didn't do that. I wish we kept the bodies because they ended up throwing the bodies in their van. I'm getting married. Again. There's video footage, again, this footage okay. around the country that cannot be confirmed mm. of soldiers dragging bodies. Not cannot be confirmed, but this adds to the public belief that the government mm. is hiding. hiding. Absolutely. It's the best way, the best way to show you have nothing to hide is to be as transparent as possible. It's offensive. You know, it's it's offensive to the people who have lost family members, loved ones, friends, children, you know, and, and it's insulting to the protesters who were there, who recognise some of the people that are no more, unfortunately. You know, I think just the country as a whole, because you have a country that is fighting for, for, for better, for good, you know, better governance. And in the grand scheme of things, it will benefit everyone. You know, so you have a country that is so passionate and we're fighting for our rights and, you know, you kill people off, you know, as if, you know, the, the punishment for speaking up is death, and then you deny that it didn't happen. I mean, it's so ridiculous. Do you believe it was the military that shot people at Lekki? Do you believe it was the military that was shooting people across the country? And if it wasn't the military, who was it? Why should any sort of force confront peaceful protesters? That is the question, you know? But for now, um, I believe His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos, initially said there had been no loss of lives. And I thought yesterday he had an interview with CNN, I believe, and he confirmed two people dead. Two dead bodies. That's what we've seen from all the mobs. On the other hand, a friend of mine who believes there was genocide in Lechi was angry at me because I refused to agree that 70 people were killed. I didn't say I disagreed. I just say I know Nigerians and fake news. And I have a right to that. Nobody's condoning murder. Nobody's condoning the death of innocent citizens. It could be any of us. The right thing to do is to ensure justice, and I hope it prevails. You know, but I'm not going to come out here and start saying massacre, genocide, because a few celebrities are saying it. Do you understand? I will wait for the information. And I think there are risks in us starting the new Nigeria. Everybody is scheming for with the same approach that the same people you want to topple have been doing I, I stand by that this brutality occurred because nigerians endured a 12-day protest calling for the government to put an end to sars the special anti-robbery squad if we talk, we are going to shoot us. If we don't talk, they are going to shoot us. Smoke will talk, but they shoot us. SARS is from the police. They're just the special squad, and they're supposed to crack down on like robbery, fraud, and just the things that you know bothered Nigerians in the 90s. It started off all well and good. They were doing a great job, and then all of a sudden, they became the people that they were supposed to be targeting. And it's been ridiculous, you know. So they, they as far as rape women, they kill young people. You know, if you have an iPhone or you look good, they stop you, they attack you, they harass you, they extort money from people. And, you know, I think it just got to a point where the, the young, the youth in Nigeria were just like, you know what, enough is enough and end SARS. The end SARS movement, I think, blew up because it was organic. Um, it began in, with a nonpartisan leaning. Uh, young people could relate to it because a lot of young people um, have been abused or know someone that has been abused or murdered or kidnapped, if I could use that term by SARS officials. So we could all unite around that thanks to the leadership, which I think was very important because they were organic. They claim there's no leadership, but when I say leadership, I'm referring to the most vocal voices of the loudest voice on social media. Right, the loudest Precisely, you know, and, and I, yeah, and I think the power they had was their ability to stay um, non-partisan. They didn't allow any political leader to come and uh, try and hijack the movement per se. NSARS was 
sort of like a forefront for all the other issues that Nigerians have, you know, experienced since we were born, since our parents were born, you know. I'm happy on the one side to see that Nigerian uh, young people, youth, uh, the average Nigerian is, uh, is expressing his dissatisfaction based on bad governance, based on police brutality. I think that one of the things that this protest did, it was just to give them a bit of a jab, you know, just to let them know, hey guys, you know, we're still here, um, we still matter, um, and our voices will be heard. Nobody wants to hear young people talk, nobody wants to hear what their opinions are. It's always uh, the same old guard who, who, who wants a particular way of doing it. Enough was enough, and NSARS was a movement that just started the rest of all the issues that we wanted to address. Poor education, poor healthcare, bad roads, lack of in infrastructure, um, very, very low minimum wage, poverty, you know, all these issues, bad policing, um, outdated laws, um, you know, just a very, 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 very corrupt system, which we've all had to sort of deal with our whole lives. And I think that at this point, everybody was just fed up, you know. I also saw a lot of people advocating for other hashtags like NNAS, and I understand that, you know, we've advocated for legislators cutting down their salary even before the COVID pandemic, but NNAS is another movement on its own that you could strategize and implement later. For now, the issue is police brutality, which every decent human being should be against. Now, I suppose use my story, do documentary, to give people hope. In Nigeria, fraud is not only a lifestyle revered by millions, it is not only an essential means of survival, it is one of, if not the most lucrative businesses in the country. In every industry in Nigeria, there's an avenue for fraud. When you look at the sums these guys steal, Jesus, damn. <laughs> the Nigerian Prince email is, is dead. It's not, nobody still does that. They're a key factor in the entire economy, you know? But obviously, what they're doing is wrong. This is the very for you. What's the fuck I want, dude? I'm just telling you this is bad. This is what's up here. You need to open your mouth. I therefore call on our youth to discontinue the street protests and constructively engage government in finding solutions. Your voice has been heard loud and clear, and we are responding. Because we've heard it all before. <laughs> Nigerian government is always agreeing to everything, you know. Um, we've had situations where we've asked for things, demanded things, and they've promised to do these things, and they haven't followed through. We need justice. Justice for everyone that has been killed unjustly by the police. Justice for everyone that has been brutalized. Justice for every single person that has been manhandled, assaulted, extorted, do you understand? By the police that is supposedly meant to protect us. So that's all we're asking for. It's not too much to ask. Now, what I expect the government to do at this point is not just telling us, oh, we're working on it. We're tired of hearing these same stories, okay? We want action. We want physical action, all right? For instance, you have disbanded SARS. But police is still brutalizing people, innocent protesters, harmless protesters who are not posing any security threat. Visit the families of the people that have lost their loved ones is not a very difficult task. You don't need six months to decide to go and visit. You can easily just start visiting. Do you know what I mean? Compensation. I mean, Nigeria is a rich economy. You could set up a fund, you know, whether it be state level or federal level, set up a fund, you know, start dispersing these monies to, to these families. And of course, in the age of social media, there's a lot of like, actual accountability because we, we can see you can broadcast what you're doing and everybody will see that these families are happy and they're receiving the money that you promised them. So how much longer can we protest for? How much longer can we protest for? We're going to be doing this until the government does what they should do. So how, long is, how long is feasibly possible? A, a month? Two months? Well, it all depends on the response we get from the government. There is a response we need to get from them, okay? We're asking for five for five. We are ready, we are ready to stay here to 100 nights till we get results from President Buhari. I'll never advocate 
for protesters blocking roads. I don't believe in that. Okay, that is the sad truth. So as much as we could get to the government, but that as individuals, as citizens of Nigeria, we also need to reflect, you know, NSAS might be a major issue to you, and it is, but that does not mean you should block the average, the, the poor woman that needs to sell bananas to feed her family that day. Your right stops at where it starts to infringe on her right. I'm fighting for my unborn children. I'm fighting for the children, children that will, that will be, that are yet to come out to stay in this country. I saw a few tweets saying, uh, sorry for the inconvenience, we're trying to change Nigeria. What makes you think you're the only one trying to change Nigeria? It's, it's self-centered, and I think it defeats the purpose, and you don't make allies that way. As a common man in Nigeria, the basic amenities is not there. The basic thing that a man or a woman should have is not there. If you want to end bad governance in Nigeria, how many issues are we going to start with? Is it end Boko Haram? Is it end banditry? Is it end wastage and civil service? Is it end? There are a lot of issues. You know, I don't, you know, I like to take issues step by step. You know, I believe in incremental change. You know, I know it's not nice to say that. It's not sexy to say that. It's sexier to say you're bringing the whole system down, but I know it's not practical. It's not too much to ask that they take it one step at a time. Yes, we know the reform is going to take a while, but how about you start? How about you start proactively? Let us see what you're doing. Let us see the step you have taken in the right direction. And then we know, okay, we need to give them time to actualize all this. And then we need to be carried along. There's, there should be transparency at all levels. You understand? Once the government decided to acquiesce to those five for five demands, I felt going out, whether it is to get free pizza, whether it is to share ideas, was no longer the focus. I saw leaders of the movement, including many I respect, still egging people to come out and refusing to sit with the government. They refused. That was wrong. Whether you trust the government or not, unless your direction is to topple the government, which at that point, none of us will be with you. Even if you don't trust the government, you still have to sit down with the government. Even if you want to amend a law, you still have to sit with House of Reps and Senate members. You can't do it on Twitter. Young people would rather adhere to cancel culture would rather promote this notion of fake news, would rather be sensational. Suddenly, our generation thinks retweets, likes, and validation are more important than genuine reforms and impact at the lowest level. Because our parents die and leave this swarm of poverty, neglect for us to handle. The next step is to sit with the government be, be it Vice President or Simbajo, the Attorney General, or whoever is on the other side, with people that are credible, people like, I believe, Faust is credible. You know, when you add uh, members of the Feminist Coalition, who played a major instrumental role in this, no, nobody's going to buy those ones off. You know, so why can't we get those ones in that independent inquiry to keep the government on their toes? You have people like me and smarter people than me in the Senate that are willing to draft this into law. You know, this is how you make change. Martin Luther King certainly made a bigger impact than Malcolm X with the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. He saw the value in sitting down and making something law because your future generations benefit from it. When the white people came and showed our forefathers mirror, dry jean, cannon gun, and so on, box of matches, people started giving out to their slaves. A mirror was in essence of 10 human beings during the period of slave trade. Now, the cannon gun outside, one of it was in essence of 100 human beings. So who treated them like this? Was it Nigerians or was it the Westerners? Supporting the talk, see them, 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 see Okay, so you mentioned that people were sort of hijacking um the protest. There have been accusations that there were sponsored hoodlums, there have been videos online, obviously not, it, it can't necessarily be verified by time or place, um, and it's specifically in Abuja. Yes. Is this, how much of this information do you believe is true? Let's start there. 
I mean, I, I absolutely believe uh, uh, people who have their own agenda uh, definitely did uh, put fuel to the fire. On my way to Kaduna, um, close to Dusa and Aleji, I encountered thugs and they did attack my car. I don't want to say my car, a government car, you know, that um, I travel with if I'm going long distances. And I can tell you this, there's, I do not believe government hired thugs will attack a government vehicle, you know, in the same manner that I do not think, and I think it is um, wrong to generalize the members of the NSAS with the hoodlums that happened, that, that, that were on the streets and, you know, were invading the Obers Palace and just, you know, creating havoc. But the poverty rate is still very high. So there are a number of hoodlums, thugs, that are just waiting for such opportunities and then they take full advantage of it. I think this is what happened. No, no, no food, no money, no anything. In the key people anyhow, who, who in the go go for Nisham. So now you could come block this yes. road now. What do you now make him do? May she, may she give us work. May you give us work. I, I don't finish my school, work no day. I don't get money to buy food. My, my mother, I don't get anything, that's why. Chai. Mm. So, but as another block road like this, it's no good now. Nah. No, no, be we cause some now. Make you give me work now. Nah. I don't go block road again. Give you. I found you. Make I just start coming inside here. There are two. Where is the second day? I beg, if you don't get business, you just start going. Where are you? I beg, come on. Where are you? I've seen some of the videos too. Uh, is it possible there's an overzealous politician that would do that? Well, you know, in Nigeria, it shows politicians are more than capable of doing that. But I'm not going to speculate without incontrovertible evidence. It's unfortunate that some people who are selfish for one other reason or the other have decided to use a peaceful protest for their own personal agenda, which, which in turn uh, were trying to take away the attention from the importance of the peaceful protest. Right now is not the time for personal agendas. It's all about we want better for Nigeria, we want better for our country, we want better for our children, we want better for our children's children, we want better for ourselves. The Nigerian government and military remain adamant that they had nothing to do with the Lekki massacre. The promptness with which we have acted seems to have been misconstrued as a sign of weakness. Human lives have been lost acts of sexual violence have been reported. All these executed in the name of the end SARS protests. President Buhari in his speech addressing the nation on Thursday, October 23rd, dismissed international press and influential leaders for jumping to conclusions on what he deemed as fake news. To our neighbors in particular and members of the international community know all the facts available before taking a position or rushing to judgment and making hasty pronouncements. He did give his condolences to the security operatives who lost their lives. Let me pay tribute to officers of the Nigeria Police Force who have tragically lost their lives in the line of duty. A response many didn't expect, even from an ex-military general. Nigeria's ruling class of elders have a well of experience in military coups, battles, and dominance. They have given millennial protesters the beating of their lives because of their disobedience and defiance. This generation of Nigeria's youth have been deprived of history lessons in schools, and the masses were deprived of a basic education. They had no clue what feathers they ruffled when they took to the streets blocking major highways in the already crippled economy. Now, they have only gotten a small taste of Nigeria's wretched past. Will they retreat to win this battle in the 2023 election? Or will they remain defiant and fight this out with no guns nor military tactics? Their only weapon is social media and the power of communication. It helps to spread awareness to their cause, but can social media dodge bullets? Will celebrity endorsements and Twitter exposés hold the Nigerian government accountable? After all, how did social media work with Boko Haram or the kidnapping of the Chibok girls and all the other injustices that happened in Nigeria. There are always a few idiots tagging uh, the UN to persecute Buhari or do something. I bet you you'll see Buhari in New York in the next General Assembly and he's gonna fly out and come back. 
that is not where the fight is. I think that people have overestimated the capacity of the international community in the first place, you know. I know that there was a rumour going around saying that if we protested for 30 days, you know, the UN would come and they would have to intervene, you know. I'm not going to lie, I knew that the UN were not going to come and, you know, that 30-day provision didn't really exist because, I mean, look at, is it Hong Kong? They've been protesting for like two years and the UN didn't get involved, so what's 30 days to them? I knew that it, it wasn't really the case, but I, I, I was part of the people that were saying that and just, you know, gingering people because I felt like it was giving people a reason to come out, you know, at least that would have brought us a 30-day window. Nigeria is its own country, you know, it's a democracy. We voted these people in, you know, technically we have to deal with it until we're ready to vote them out and vote other people in. You know, no country has the right to just come and intervene and completely, you know, change things around because the people aren't really happy. Even if there were foreign interference, do Nigerians really want that? The youth must turn back the pages of history and understand how the transatlantic slave trade worked, how colonialism worked, and understand that foreign interference will only occur at said country's best interest. As we live in an era of neo-colonialism, tweets from Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, and other influential people will not stop bullets from gunning down innocent civilians. Black West Africa is not a priority. And the United States has the capability. All the elements of power, we have those. So why not? Com complete, go it's not a priority. That's the problem. We are committed elsewhere in the world, in Nigeria, Nigeria which is truly not, it, it should not be surprising. Look, what's happening in Nigeria is barbarous. It's horrible. I mean, it's complete madness, yet it's not a priority. Only the people of Nigeria can help themselves. Strategy and intelligence is imperative. I was there. I just see blood, shooting, you know, war. Even if there's no power on a good day in that axis, there's always light at the toll gate. There was no light. The lights were off. The street lights were off. It was pitch black. All our effort literally was massacred. A lot of people sort of that feel, yeah. you know, that he's part of the system, right? He's part of the system. He's benefited off of his father being a governor, ex-governor and leader of APC. And so he's almost culpable in, you know, even just putting off his billboard. I want to talk about you. You, you, your father is a, is a governor. I can't speak for she. Some people would consider you, you know, tribalistic from some of your tweets. Your wife is from Delta, is she Igbo? Yes, Delta Igbo. Her mother's Delta Igbo. Are you a tribalist? That's the first question. 